Hi everyone and welcome to another Power Apps Roadmap. Today we are building a digital dashboard with uh, connections that are going to show us the temperature for your desired location, the time, news and talk about a few other data sources that you could pull in. Um, we are, there's going to be lots of opportunity to customise this uh, for your own use, uh, so let's get started. The first thing that we want to do is build in a background image. So I'm going to add an image from the media section here. So we are going to pull our image from a website called unsplash.com, which is a free stock photography website. And you can access their image library uh, through this URL, which is source.unsplash.com. And then we want to uh, list our, the screen size uh, of our power app screen. So in our case, it's 1366 by 768. And that is going to pull a random image that fits that dimen those dimensions and pull it into our um, power app. And this is just at random and we're going to come back to this later and make things a little more specific to our, uh, to our task here. The next thing that I tend to do when I'm building these um, dashboards is I add a gradient on top of the, uh, the image it just makes things it just helps text stand out a little bit more so uh, let me rename this image and we're going to call it um, background image and we'll add another new image and I want to set this to an SVG which is just a black, the, image, the SVG image is just a black gradient. Um, and I have added the a link to this SVG in the description of this video so you can gra uh, grab it and use it for yourself. And I resize the image so that it's taken up the full screen and I just drop this in at the bottom and now I can add text on top of pretty much any image that's going to pop up here and this black gradient is going to help the text stand out a little bit. So part of what makes this dashboard a little bit special is that there's going to be information constantly updating on it uh, because we're going to have the time running. Um, so just to get the time, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, always, always name your elements uh, gradient. I'm going to add a new timer and drop it down at the bottom here. We're going to hide it once, once we're finished with it anyway. And I'm going to call this one clock. So we know that this timer is going to update our clock. We want the duration to, uh, of the timer to be zero because we want it to constantly um, action itself. We want repeat on and auto start. So as soon as our um, as soon as our power app screen launches, we want this timer to kick in and just loop over and over again at zero seconds uh, for our end timer function on end timer is updating um, a variable with the current date and time. Uh, so that formula looks like this. Set variable current date time to now. This now command uh, grabs this very instant um, and set in its, uh, the data type is date time and we're, that now makes our current date time uh, variable data type date time as well. So let us check that this is working. We can grab a label and now we know that we can set this to current date time and as soon as I start this you can see that the current date and time is 
inside this text label. But we don't want to use just a standard label, we quite like to make things a little bit more stylish. So let's delete that label and we are going to add in an HTML text box. And I'm going to position this down in the bottom right hand corner here and stretch it out. And let's, let's take a little bit of padding so it doesn't go straight into the, right into the edge here. Um, and the great thing about these HTML boxes is that we can use the HTML to steal some functionality that Power Apps doesn't yet have. And the one that I'm interested in stealing more than anything else is the text shadow um, CSS function. So again, I will put the HTML code in the description or a link to a file with it anyway. As I found out from the SVG video previously, um, YouTube has a problem with the angled brackets in the description, so I had to do a workaround. Um, the, the formula that we want in here, I can expand to show, we want to create a new div in HTML, and we're going to set the style, text align right, font size 200 pixels, color white, Tech shadow, and this is the this is the part that we're really interested in. We are generating a text shadow behind the text to help it stand out a little bit more. And we're taking the current date time variable, and from that we're extracting hour hour minute minute, and then changing the font size down to eighty, and pulling the seconds from current date time. And then because we're good web designers, we're closing our div tag here. So let's set auto height and drag this in here. And it looks like we should be okay bringing, to the, bringing it to the edge. Um, and if I play this now, it's constantly ticking around like so. I think it's important that we also show the date, so I'm going to grab a rectangle icon and we're going to set a height on this to just one pixel and then change the colour to white and I want to um, grab it and move it down here. And then we will add in another HTML box, uh, HTML text, move this also over here, drag it out a little bit, let's make it the same width just now. And the formula that we want to use here is um, doing the same thing but we're changing the font size down quite a little, quite a bit. The formula that we're going to use here looks very similar to what we used for the time but we're setting the font size a little bit smaller and instead of retrieving the minutes and hours and seconds we're only, one, we're only interested in retrieving month, day and year and that has returned us uh, this, uh, this code here. So let us set the auto height so because we don't want that scroll bar appearing and we can add that there and we might drag in this side to the edge of our minutes. If we play that, so we can now hide this uh, timer. We no longer need to show that and I should name this to date display. And now we are going to start um, working with our data sources. And the first data source that we're going to talk about today is MSN Weather. So now MSN Weather is shown up as a data source. We want to declare a bunch of variables uh, with the value with a value tied to the MSN Weather data uh, data connection. So let's add in a new timer. The first timer it was updating every instance, and this time we don't we won't really need to do that so much. We are going to take uh, this timer and update it 
every half hour, so that's every 3,000, three, yeah, so, so we're going to update this timer every 3,600,000 milliseconds, or every half hour. We want that one to repeat and we want it to auto start as well. Um, and just like the other one, I'm going to bring it down here. Uh, so I know where it's going to be. We'll, we'll hide it once we're finished adding in the, the controls. So we want to rename this timer and let's call it weather call. As this is what's going to connect to our MSN weather. Uh, the last one we set the we set our formula to run on timer start but in this instance because it's going to be a half hour before the timer ends we want to set this to run on timer start so let's open up our on timer start control and take a look at the, what formula we're going to add in here there's a lot of ways we could do this um, automatically but for uh, simplicity here I'm gonna set our current location on timer start and I want to set it to Washington DC as that is pretty much where we are so the next formula that we want to add in here we want to reference the current location uh, on the MSN weather connection and uh, start returning some information. So our first formula that we want is going to look like this. And we are going to set a variable called current temperature to MSN weather, current weather, and we're going to use current location as our location. And units imperial, you can choose between imperial or metric, depending on uh, what is easiest for you to read. And then as you work your way through, uh, you can start to explore just how much information the MSN weather data source uh, can provide you with and there's a lot in here so I'm only going to cover a few of them um, take a little while when you're working with this and see what's available there is uh, times for sunrise, time for sunset there is um, UV index lots of stuff that uh, would be of interest to you when you're building your own dashboard. So we know that uh, that's going to be the same each time and we want to grab the uh, units of temperature that, we are, uh, that we're gathering here. Um, so this is going to bring us back the number and this will bring us back the relative units. Obviously when we're dealing with Imperial that will be Fahrenheit. We already know what that's going to be. We want to... Uh, I can add it up to here. That will um, we need to change what this is, so this will be current units. So we are going to return the current temperature, the current units that we're pulling for that temperature, and we also want to set a variable for current description, which is going to give us a like a, an immediate forecast, tomorrow forecast today's high and today's low and you can see that there are um, locations for all these here so I need to update this formula to point to, to uh, um, give current location as an argument for each of them and that will solve those errors so every half hour this timer will reactivate and set all of these variables to um, these data source points and update our text boxes that we're going to add in screen here. Um, now, as we had before, uh, we want to add in um, the HTML text boxes. So with this HTML text box, we want to add in our current location and the word is so that we get a text string that reads where we are and um, the word is so that we can then put the description of today's weather uh, directly below it. So I'm going to extend this out here. We know that this will this will appear the first time we hit play and just like the uh, time so the time did. So let's play the preview of this so we can see Washington DC. That's great. We now know how much 
space this is going to take up. I'm going to add that here and I will set this about there just in case we want to go in at a later date and change it to a, a longer place name and then I want to grab another HTML box after I name this to location display new uh, HTML box and this one we want to reference our current description that we are pulling so let's drop this in set the auto height again and we're going to have to extend this a bit further out so this one um, we can move up a little bit and let's move this out to um, there just in case this, this text is a little bit so let's set this around here so now I think we could start showing a little diversity in our font selection I'm going to set the time to uh, little black I think that that's a, a nice bold choice here and I want to set our description to little black as well you could also set that through your uh, through the CSS text that were prepend in before the the description or before any other element um, but I I'm doing it in power apps um, and we also need to add in another text box so let's get this one named this is going to be description display um, new text box we'll rename this one first because we know that this one is going to be our temp display not for temporary and let's pull this over onto this side and the formula that we need for this we need to obviously reference two variables that we that our timer is calling which will be our temperature and our units so our um, so our formula looks like this again pulling up a font size uh, setting our text shadow and then referencing current temp and current units set our auto height set our width so it's all in one given where we are in the world I'm going to leave enough room for a, a third digit and we want to line these two up roughly together we'd like them to move in sync so let's change this one to be little pat black as well and there we have them sitting side by side um, we could we should adjust this one so that they're not going to overlap let's bring this in a little bit and bring this out to here there we go so let's grab another grab a rectangle and let's make a duplicate of it and I want to grab this and pull it up here so let's do it. and then directly below that let's add in um, one more uh, HTML box and we're going to make a reference to tomorrow's weather in this so our formula for this one is calling our tomorrow forecast set our auto height set the width and there we go this is starting to come together now at this point we can hide our timer so let's get rid of that um, and I think it's about time we revisited our background image so one of the cool things that the unsplash API call does it allows you to add in uh, search terms so you can add them in by adding a question mark and then you can just add in which, whatever you want to search for now we would like to return something based on uh, where we're looking at so let's add in and current location 
which is set when it was set to DC and that was set at random but I think this is a pretty good call um, it's pulled a nice black and white image you can see Washington Monument there this must be taken from uh, in the Lincoln Memorial we want to take let's grab this one as a good example of the of what we want to use here and we'll repurpose it but I think we should probably right align this and instead of pulling in tomorrow forecast we want it to be um, and instead of referencing tomorrow forecast we want it to pick out our high so let's use today high and change tomorrow will be to hi colon 91 and uh, our low is going to use a very similar text so I will add in here uh, current units So I'm going to add in at this point current units and then um, push and to finish off the tag set auto height set it just above and we want to copy the content to this HTML box and paste it into this one and let's set this one to left for a little bit of change let's set the text align to left on this one and we just need to update our variable and change the text there to say low set our auto height and let's set it to about the end there so we can see what the high and the low of the day is and our current temperature or te certainly temperature within the past half hour um, our next stage is to add in a graphical representation of the weather so to do that um, I want to add in and so to do that I want to add in another image so let's go to image and pick out that one here and let's make this uh, start there and come down to about here it's okay that things overlap we're going to work with the layers here uh, and give it a bit of style and we want the uh, image to be and we want the image to be varied dependent on So we are going to want the So we are going to want to set the image to an SVG um, and we want it So we are going to update the source of our image to an SVG depending on the weather um, so I'm going to create
So we've added an image to our screen here and we want it to update every time the weather updates to reflect uh, this description. So let's take a look at our weather call timer and below there we are going to add in uh, three new variable declarations where we are assigning um, the term cloudy night, cloudy day and sunny weather um, and we're going to assign each of those variables this SVG code which uh, in all three of these reference a different, uh, will build a different image. Uh, again I will say I will add links uh, to these images to this code in the description so that you can uh, copy along with us at home depending on where you live and depending on the time of year you'll need you will probably need a lot more uh, images uh, I'm using three for this demo but you can obviously add as many as you want in this image we want to read the value of our description okay so we are going to update our image uh, to reference uh, sunny weather and you can see if I for all, uh, if I refer all of that it's grabbed the sun and dropped it in there you may have to for the first time hit play to preview the app because uh, your timer will run and will update the variables with those images um, but then after that when you type in any of your variables that you've set it'll, it'll appear um, but what we want to do is change this dependent on the value um, of our current description so I am going to update our formula to read like this if cloud if the word cloudy is in our current description and the time value uh, hours and minutes is greater than 10 o'clock or the hour and minutes is less than 5 a.m. then please use cloudy night otherwise we want to use cloudy day and as you can see here it's pulled in the cloudy day um, the sun and the cloud uh, image and let's rename this one to say weather icon and we definitely want to move it beneath our date display so let's um, send backwards and as you can see um, I don't think it gets in the way of anything else but when we get down there to uh, date display just a couple more we can now see the date on top of the the uh, image and you can see that that the light, the white line rectangle sits on top of the image as well. This is really pretty much us done. Uh, everything else now is really what you want to do with it. We're going to look at one more connector and uh, this is going to be the RSS feed. So RSS feeds have been around for decades. So we have RSS added to as a data source in our app and now I'm going to add a new gallery. Uh, so let's take a blank vertical gallery and I'm going to drop it down into this bottom left corner, send it out to about here and drop this to there and we can use the edge of this line as the header for this gallery for the description of this gallery and what I'm going to do is pull in information using the RSS feed uh, from a newspaper website so let's insert um, let's connect to some data we want to take out custom gallery sample from there and I want to I already know the URL that I want to pull, take from. I'm going to take from the Independence website and I want to return uh, the first three or the most recent three um, items in its RSS feed 
uh, ordered by date and that formula looks like this so we're grabbing our RS, RSS data source list the data feed the list of feed items for independent or code UK lifestyle gadgets and tech RSS or sort by publish date descending and we want the first three from, from this first n in our uh, formula here and if I now want to add in um, an element I know that I can roll this up a little bit um, I think the first thing that I want to add is probably going to be uh, another rectangle. I want to set the background to my rectangle to be 0, 0, 0 for black and then with an opacity of um, 30% and next I can add in a label and we can expand this out and again we're just going to be looking through our uh, this item and it's, we've got a list here of uh, all the stuff that is connected to let's take our summary and we want to change the font value, the font colour to white and stretch this out and I also know that occasionally there will be some characters in here that this has trouble reading so we're going to write this as plain text this item.summary So um, our RSS feed is returning the top three here and what I want to add in is an icon of the envelope. Let's move that over to this side. Change our colour to white and we are going to make one more connection in our, uh, in our Power App today. This connection is going to be to our email. So we'll add that in. Uh, you'll notice some blur in here. It's just to hide the um, my email address. And the, on our on select, we're going to change the formula to send out an email to my email address with the subject line commute reading and the body text says this uh, will list the summary a hyphen and then a link to the to the and to the data so when you tap on the envelope an email will be sent to whichever email address you specify um, and i'll have the subject line commute reading and the body will be the summary of the news story and a link to it so when you're on the bus or train you can read um, and we can test this out let's hit that hit that. and you can see there's the three dots along the top there and now if I pop over to my email I can see there's one email one new email in here and that's a link to the new story that I selected and that's really it now there's lots of ways that you could um, play with this format so let's say that um, you don't want to look up the news uh, and you'd much rather pull some videos in here. You can up update the gallery address to pull in a YouTube feed and instead. So all you need to do is change your um, RSS feed link to youtube.com slash feed slash videos or xml and then add in the channel id and now when i add in content you want to add in a video so you can update um you can add in a video element and instead of using the sample video we'll update it to this item dot uh, primary link 
and using that channel ID uh, you can that channel ID is specific to uh, a very familiar face to Power Apps uh, users uh, it's April Dunham's channel uh, so you'd be able to browse through all of her videos and it's easy enough to grab any other YouTube channel that you're interested in watching and simply swap out the ID and when it refreshes this time the great Shane Young's videos as well um, it's just one other idea of what you can do uh, with your dashboard give yourself some interactive content um, please follow me on Twitter and leave a, a screenshot of any dashboards that you put together uh, I'd love to see them in action um, as always thanks for watching